So now level five scrolling section. Uh, this one starts to get really tough with its platforming. Uh, there's a lot of bottomless pits that can get you. If you haven't died yet, you probably will die here your first time through. Uh, you know, it's super easy. All these are bottomless pits. And we also want to take these guys out. They'll throw stuff at you if you don't take them out in time. Uh, which is, it's pretty simple to avoid. You can just like move. You can just like jump and you know, they'll, they'll miss you. Alright, and these guys can actually kill themselves if they jump into the wall hard enough. Like, you can see these guys dead. Uh, so you usually don't have to worry about them. They usually just kind of knock themselves out. Okay, now at this point you have to be very patient. And you want to make sure they're both up before you try to jump. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you get hit on the side of the spikes, you'll get knocked back into the bottomless pit and die automatically. Not good. So now as we go up here, we have to make a few careful jumps so we don't hit these spikes. Go across this. Okay, and we're home free. All right, now I'll make our way along these. These kind of go a little bit randomly. The good news is you can't be crushed by them, so you don't really have to worry. Just jump randomly, and you'll be fine. All right, now this is where things start to get tough. We're gonna have to jump on these kind of pendulums here and make our way along the platforms. It's not too bad here because there's generally floor underneath, so if you fall, you'll be fine. Uh, but of course, later on they'll take away that safety net, and of course, you know, you'll fall into a bottomless pit. So, uh, definitely good to practice now if you need it. Alright, so from here I think we go left. There's a lot of different ways to go. Uh, there might be some pots with health upgrades, but you know, I don't really need them too badly right now. Okay, now at this point we can pick up the elephant. Uh, I think we've gotten that before and I never really talked about it, but uh, basically the elephant serves as a checkpoint uh, if you die and uh, you can actually start back there, so it's nice. These guys you can just duck under and it uh, it's works out pretty well that way. I'm gonna take him out before he throws stuff. All right, so here's the part with the bottomless pit. So you gotta work that out really well. Tell you what, this is like, this is old school platforming, like really at its prime right here. This is the type of thing, you know, we all had to deal with as kids. <laughs> okay, so let's see what the timing is best for this. Um, this will probably do it. Oh, there we go. Get up here before it retracts. All right. So at this point, we're doing well. I'm glad I made it through that section. That can be pretty tough. Now, these people you want to take out from a distance because they'll kind of like spill, I guess, like the tea on you. And so you have to kind of jump if they do that. And uh, also, if you don't take them out, they'll keep kind of bouncing towards you like that. And yeah, it can, you can get into some bad situations if enemies start respawning. All right, there we go. That worked pretty well. And always make sure to take these guys out because you will get hit if you jump into them. And obviously you'll get knocked back into the bottomless pit and die. You know how these things work. Okay, so yeah, this section is that's definitely the hardest part so far. I'm glad we didn't die, actually. I'm really happy with how that went. Uh, it's just one of those things where you want to be patient. If you rush things, you'll definitely die. So you just want to, you know, take your time and make sure you plan out every jump. Right, these guys aren't too bad. You can pretty much just throw money at them. Uh, just kind of alternate, you know, and you'll be fine. Take them out in the air and take out the little guys that shoot out. Okay, now this boss is actually a giant pain. You really want to make sure you've got armor for this one. Uh, because for one, see, he has that projectile that he throws in basically all directions. Also, this, like, kite thing we're on is moving around all the time. So it's kind of hard to tell where you are at, 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 in certain times. I thought he was going to shoot there. Oh, shot there. Oh, yep, and you can get knocked off into a bottomless pit and die. That's not good. Okay, so we've made our way back to the boss again. Uh, I guess basically, don't stand right next to the edge. I mean, I've got armor so I can take the hits. So I, I was really trying to avoid them, but I just got a little too close to the side. It may be a good idea to just try to hit him as much as you can and not really even worry about damage. Because uh, you can see, he doesn't take too much abuse before he goes down. All right, so we've literally dropped in on the wise man here. It's gotta be something special for us to have come all this way. Especially after that, like, fiendish castle you set up. Why'd you do that, man? <laughs> all right, so he tells us we need to go to the dragon pond in the land of Izumo. And the white mirror will show us where we need to go. And it's his latest invention, apparently. 
Oh, cool. Oh, wow, he's got a miracle transport machine. Man, this guy's, this guy's advanced. Can't wait to see that. That doesn't quite look like a like a teleporter to me. That kind of looks like a cannon. Oh, well, guess it was. <laughs> so yeah, definitely a good sense of humor with this one. So uh, yeah, it was not so miraculous. It went haywire. I don't know. It seemed to function just as intended. Now no one knows where they are. So we're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere now. Okay, so now we're starting up Tingu Mountain, and uh, there's kind of a store here. Now, uh, this is... Uh, I was too late. I was trying to talk. I was too late getting an attack off. Uh, this is the first part where you're gonna have to actually buy something to proceed with the game. Turns out we have to buy this pass, which you can see is 980 bucks. So this is a case where you may have to grind for money if you don't quite have it. Uh, but thankfully we can buy it. Um, I don't think there's actually another store here. I'm uh, pretty sure that's the only one, which unfortunately means that we don't get any, like, armor refills. You can see we're on our straw coat. Uh, however, you know, we've got some full pizzas and we should be fine. Uh, the next stage I generally do okay with. It can be a bit of a pain, but, you know, you just really have to be careful, so. Uh, we can pretty much just skip all of this. I mean, there's a lot of places here for minigames, obviously, because you probably need money at this point. And since we don't need any health recovery or anything, we can basically just continue onwards. Okay, so instead of, uh, kind of, you know, like, people in this part, uh, we're gonna be dealing with mostly these monkeys, there's quite a lot of them around, and they jump around a little bit erratically, which can make them, uh, kinda hard to deal with sometimes. Uh, but mostly, you know, that you can kinda see them coming, so... They also like to announce themselves with their screeching. We can come down here if we want. I think there's a health extension here. Okay, no, it's just a fortune doll, but yeah, that's fine. Oh, man. <laughs> wow, that was a crazy jump. You like went back and forth there. All right, once we get up here, uh, I think we're going to get uh, harassed by quite a lot here, so we just need to keep moving. Yeah, we're also going to see kind of these, like, bird soldier guys? I don't really know. Birds in video games, you pretty much know how that works. Uh, these guys just hover and then they'll charge you really quickly. So they'll also circle around you and <laughs> just like run into you and not give you a chance to do anything. Okay, there we go. But still one hit and they're gone, which is nice. Oh man. And having three of them, it's not quite what I had envisioned here. Oh man, okay, I'm, I'm getting a little wrecked by these guys. All right. There we go, finally. So you can see we're out of armor, we're taking damage now, which is a little bad, but not too bad, I'm not worried about it. Uh, again, we've got three whole pizzas and three partial pizzas, we also just got a life extension there. Alright, now here we've got a bit of a mini-boss, these guys aren't too bad. Uh, you basically just kind of throw back and forth and they'll like jump over you, so you know, you, I don't even know what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, this guy will throw stuff at you, you want to jump over it, of course, I... I was a little bit late on my reaction time, but, you know, once you take him out, it's done. Oh, man. <laughs> These monkeys, I tell you what. All right, now, here, yeah, you kind of want to stay inside, otherwise you'll land, like, right on some of those birds and take damage, so don't want that. Okay, so now we can move on to the next section, and this is where... We kind of have the, uh, like, two-layer mechanic again, the foreground and the background. You want to stand on this platform so it takes you inside the waterfall. Uh, that means you can't interact with things on the outside, but uh, these fish on the inside will attack you, and they uh, pretty much just home in. Alright, I think at this point we need to be outside. Actually, maybe not. Let's stay on the inside. I think we just have to climb up the other side. Crab also deals damage. He's kind of innocuous there, but you definitely want to take him out. All right, and the trick here is not to get sent to the outside, otherwise you'd have to kind of climb this whole thing again. Uh, you want to stay on the inside of the waterfall here. Man, I don't like all these fish. And again, do not get sent to the outside, because that'd be bad. 
and then we can come up here. Now, again, this is another case where you can go to the right or the left. You want to go to the left, because that's the only way forward. All right, now the boss here has a few tricks, if you know what to do. Uh, he has one attack that's a bit of a pain, which is this one, if you want to try to dodge all that. And then at this point, you can basically just stay to the side, I think. Yeah, and he will not come down. So we can just kind of pelt him with shots here, and uh, we won't have to really worry about him anymore. Uh, this is kind of a common theme with a couple different bosses. Uh, this one can be a bit of a pain, though. He's got a couple different attacks he can do. He can throw his wig at you. You want to try to duck underneath him there. You can see I took damage. The pizza actually kicked in. And he's also got that, which is somewhat hard to avoid. Okay, I'm doing poor. I'm doing really bad here. All right, let's get, this, let's get things together here. Oh, it was the wig. I thought he was doing the fire attack. Oh, man. All right, there we go. I kind of got it together at the end so you can see what the general strategy is. Uh, you can basically jump over both of those attacks. You just got to kind of switch up your timing depending on which one he's doing. All right, so yeah, they got a little bit distracted, but uh, we're finally making our way towards the lake we were instructed to go to. Okay, so at this point, oh man, I hate those birds. This is another one where they're supposed to be like above you, you know, so like you don't really get hit on the ground. But again, it just kind of detects if your sprites hit each other, so they can cause you a little bit of trouble. Unfortunately, no armor at this store, which is a huge pain. I really would like some. Uh, we can't stock back up on sandals though, and we can't buy any regular pizza because we're still on the full stuff. All right, if I can avoid taking a hit, I want to get to this restaurant so I can get some recovery. And uh, in terms of what the dishes do, uh, they don't really explain it, which is weird because there's plenty of room in the text box for it. Uh, but this will restore four life units, I believe. This will do six and this will do eight. So we want to get the six in order to max ourselves out. And then we can continue going to the right. This is basically just a left to right section. You don't really need to worry about getting lost. I would really like to find a store, though, with some armor. Okay, here we go. Well, to speak and you shall receive, I suppose. So we can go ahead and stock back up here on pretty much everything. I don't still have helmets. Yeah, and in terms of, like, the difference between the armor and the helmets, uh, helmets kind of protect you. Like, there's a little bit of kind of location damage. Uh, like, helmets will kind of protect you from things like projectiles dropping from above and stuff like that. So, you know, the helmet does act independently of the armor. It's just, you, it doesn't trigger near as often as the armor does. So, you know, in most circumstances, it's not as useful. Still worth stocking up on, though, of course. I'm gonna kind of follow this guy because I think, like, less birds spawn. So I'm gonna keep him there. But it turns out through these gates are where we need to head. And this section right here is super annoying with the water mechanic, because you don't just like die in water, which is good, but you do just kind of periodically take damage and it's really hard to get out of, so if you fall in, you may just kind of be doomed to keep getting hit over and over. And also, these guys dropping bombs on you the whole way don't really help. You can see you've got a little bit of time to get out if you do fall in, so you know, I guess if you're good enough at it, it doesn't really matter that much. And also, jumping on the boat does not preserve your forward momentum, so you kind of have to judge that as well. Now, at this point, we can basically just run through on most of these. And then, okay, yeah, the last one's going to hit us. That's fine. And there's going to be a lot of this kind of thing, trying to land on narrow platforms in the water. Uh, we do want to come up here, though, because there's a decent amount of money and also a health upgrade. And yes, you probably have noticed by this point, but the health upgrades do reset with each new chapter. 
So, you know, you'll start with just your regular base health. See so, yeah, how there I just randomly got hit. Now, these things are really weird. You just kind of have to wait for them to be higher, but they always sink if you're standing on them. So, you kind of have to just like jump up and down and wait for them to get to their highest point. Okay, well, that wasn't ideal, but we made it. I picked up an elephant there. Now, at this point, uh, we kind of have to stand on the right half in order for it to move forward, which, you know, I guess makes sense. Try, <laughs> try to get a nice, like, snipe shot in there with the money, but it didn't quite work. Okay, now, this part's really bad. Obviously, we've got to land on these red balls, and they'll sink, so you can't stand on them for long. Uh, it's also very easy to get hit by that bird when you're trying to jump on the platform. Okay. <laughs> Not going for the pot anymore. Or maybe I am. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay, that was really bad, but I got a health upgrade out of it, so you know, I, it's probably not worth it since I have armor, but oh well. It was <laughs> it was an experience anyway. I don't know that I've ever gotten that pot. And at this point, you're basically forced to go in the water, so you want to just jump and then like immediately try to jump out and you can do that without taking damage. Okay, so I think we've made it to the end and they actually give you a lot of a, uh, like a huge break here in terms of the boss. Uh, we're gonna have to be admitted by Hakuryu uh, and he's uh, kind of this white dragon dude, but it turns out there's a really easy way to beat this guy. All you gotta do is get right underneath him here, either throw in front or above if he's above you. And there you go, we've taken him out. Because he kind of just like bends in front of you or shoots over you if you stand right there. So, a uh, really cheesy strategy, I guess, to take him out, but it works. All right, so we found the white mirror and it says that Yuki is in a land far from here. This is in the far kingdom of South Ryukyu. Oh, and also, this scene here is actually the same scene you get if you pick Travel Package C uh, at the beginning of the game after the first section. It's basically this exact same thing. Alright, so we're getting very close to the end of the game. If I'm not mistaken, Zone 8 might actually be the final one. Uh, it's a little bit longer if it is. It might kind of have like three or four sections, but... Uh, you know, we're definitely reaching the end of the game here. Yeah, so we haven't actually come across any save points because I haven't really been looking for them. Uh, but I know there is one down here that I'm definitely going to take because obviously this is where the game is going to reach its hardest point. Uh, it turns out this building over here at the very end is one. So we're going to stop by and keep a diary here real quick. Yeah, and I like how she tells us, you've kept a good diary. Well, thanks. I didn't really ask you to read it, but fine. <laughs> Alright, so now we can continue on. Uh, these guys, I haven't really talked about them, but they're probably some of the more annoying enemies in the game. Uh, in fact, I would say they may just well be number one. Uh, they throw these types of hammers that kind of like bounce around. They, pr I think they bounce like three times and then they disappear. And of course, they kind of home in on you a little bit too. So yeah, you can see there they are. So it's not too bad if you're pretty far away because they kind of slow down quite a lot after the first bounce, but, uh, you know, if you're somewhat close to them and there's, like, more than one, you're pretty much guaranteed to get hit. Okay, so at this point we've basically reached uh, where roughly the transition to the next section is. We've just got to do a couple little things first. Um, I think it's this building right here we need to go into. Yeah, there's another shop. And this is a very important shop for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it sells the gold helmet and gold armor, which is of course the best in the game, so... Sign me up for that. It's also another item over here, the text, which is 980 bucks. And if you remember, there was another item before that was 980 bucks. Yep, you need to buy this in order to actually continue with the game. 
So you can see by my money count roughly, I'm down to 90,000 after I started at 99.99, so that's kind of where I get roughly the figure of like 12 to 15 would be a good amount to collect at the beginning. Okay, so we can walk past the uh, raccoon dog here, and I think he's the one that would stop us if we didn't have the text. Uh, I believe the story behind this is that they either, like, I think they speak a different language or something like that, and this text is kind of like a way to translate it. Um, there's a lot of people in the village earlier that if you went into their houses, they would just speak with symbols, like you couldn't understand them, so. Uh, you may actually be able to go back and talk to them now, but I'm not going to, obviously. So this is actually the king here. The castle's been overrun by a band of thieves. And uh, I believe they're planning a wicked scheme. Well, probably. If thieves are, you know, taking over the castle, they probably don't have good things in mind. So he gives us the hint that one of the statues surrounding the castle leads to an escape tunnel. We've got to go there in order to stop their evil plot. All right, will do. <laughs> also, yeah, I love that little section of the music where it just gets kind of dissonant. You know, I haven't been talking too much about the music because, you know, I kind of mentioned it at the beginning. It's definitely one of the stronger points of this game. Yeah, it pretty much goes without saying, in a way. All right, so we've got to make our way back over here to uh, the first area we went to. All right. <laughs> Man, just to avoid getting hit by that other guy. All right, so the statue we need to hit is actually the second one on the left over here. So we just hit it a few times and it'll blow up, revealing a passage behind it. And this is where we enter one of the final side-scrolling sections. It's not the last one, uh, but you know, it's definitely pretty tricky in places. All right, so at this point, obviously, we've got to kind of time our descent with these rolling guys. And we can just jump here. At this one, it's a little tougher because we got to jump over them on the way up. There we go. That'll do it. And this fire is pretty simple to avoid. It's a very predictable pattern, so no big deal there. Wait for this one, and there we go. All right, now this is where things can get a little rough, but it's not quite as bad as it would seem at first because there's no bottomless pit. So, you know, you're pretty safe even if you do fall. Uh, you can take these statues out. We will have to take one of them out, uh, but I like to just avoid them and just, you know, make my way through. It's less you have to worry about. Yeah. And you also gotta time out those platforms falling. And these are pretty slow, though, so you don't have to worry about it too much. All right, this one appears the one we have to destroy. So let's, uh, it's probably easiest to do it with the pipe because it has a much wider hit range. You just gotta kind of hit it in the face and it'll blow up. Now, however, I'm going to make my way down over here. Oh man, I didn't get it. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, this is bad. Let's just go back. Uh, so from here, actually. Okay, I, there it is. I really like to go back up. I'm gonna try to lean on that and then jump to that ladder. Okay. Took a few hits there, we got a health extension. Again, probably wasn't worth it, but the gold armor is actually quite resilient. And, you know, we've got some chain stuff in backup as well, so I'm not worried about taking the hits there. At this point, you can take these guys out, and they will pretty much just keep spawning, and they will eventually just fall on their own. But, you know, if you kind of want to be in control of it, it might be a good idea to take some out yourself. Now, you can also just duck under those guys instead of having to take them out. So as long as you have pretty decent aim throwing up, that section's not too bad. I'm gonna just ignore that thing and move on. Okay, now this is one of the worst parts, because there's a lot of these hammer throwing guys. Good news is there's a checkpoint right there. So, you know, if you screw up a couple times, you got a little bit of leeway. There's a couple ways you can take this section. Uh, one, you could try to just speed past before they reach the top. You could also just wait for them. Obviously, we're gonna have to be, you know, jumping on these things. Uh, you can kind of knock them off once they reach the top. Oh, that was bad. Okay, <laughs> wow, I managed to stay on somehow. I'm kind of surprised. But yeah, you also, you can just barely make it if you just speed through. All right, this is where things get bad. It may be worth it to just... Okay, yeah. I was gonna just take the hit, like, on him when I landed, because I'd still be able to be on that platform, but... Uh, getting hit by the hammer was not quite what I had in mind, though. Alright, so I'm gonna try to just kind of move along a little bit here. See, you can make it, it's pretty close, but... Oh... 
Oh, man. I'm so glad. I don't even care if I'm still getting hit. I just did not want to fall off. Okay. <laughs> the, like I said, this section is very bad. Right, I'm gonna wait. I'm actually gonna scroll that guy off screen and then kind of restart him. Here we go. I'm also a little nervous because I have no lives, so <laughs> I'm gonna came over if I fell down a pit there. At this point, if you do it just right, you can uh, jump right over that guy with the full jump. Okay, at this point, I'm not too concerned from here on out because it's basically just bosses and then like one more little section. Uh, this guy, we've just got to jump on these that come over to the left and hit the top guy, hit him three times, and that'll destroy that section. And obviously, we're just gonna have to repeat it for each new section that comes across here. Oh man, yeah, you kind of have to be out in the middle. Okay, I got hit like three. Wow, my gold armor is gone. Okay, that's not the best thing in the world, but we'll probably be all right. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad that I got hit by that guy. I mean, this is a relatively easy boss, all things considered. So. I really shouldn't have taken that damage, but... Alright, then once he gets down to the bottom part, he just runs away. And we can kind of bounce off the walls here. The bouncing is done automatically, which is kind of neat. You just have to hit, like, right or left to get him started, and he'll just go back and forth. I like it. Alright, so we've got this one little section here, and again, this is one we do not need to die. There are a few bottomless pits. Uh, but I generally don't find this too tough. Uh, this is one where your forward momentum actually does carry, so you don't have to, like, hit forward when you jump. You just have to jump straight up and you'll... Um, except for there when you actually land on a stationary platform. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky because there is just a giant bottomless pit uh, underneath us, so we're gonna have to be slightly careful here. We kind of stop them moving there. Yeah, I mean, this is all pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, some, <laughs> again, I, like, I don't really want to talk too much because I kind of do have to concentrate a little bit. That was kind of bad. I may be able to just jump to the second one from here. That was kind of close, too. Okay, I made it onto that one. Okay, then from here we climb the ladder and then we can move on. Now, at this point, I don't think... Okay, well, okay, there are still a few more bottomless pits, but if we're careful here, we should be able to get through this without too much trouble. So basically, the key here is you want to take these guys out before you try to jump across the gap. Uh, otherwise, they'll kind of like, you'll hit your head on them, and then it'll get knocked back into the pit. So every time before you reach a ledge here, uh, stop and wait for these guys to come out so you can take care of them. See, like right there, that guy would have hit me if I would have tried to jump it. Right, then just these two left. All right, and we can jump up the stairs. Now, at this point, I think we're... Oh, actually, never mind. We're not quite home free. Okay, this one can be tricky. Uh, we'll have to hope that we get through without falling off. I, I probably should have bought some lives earlier when I had the chance. Uh, if you saw pictures of Goemon in the store, uh, you can buy those to get lives. Now, this guy's not quite your traditional boss. Uh, what you basically have to do is keep trying to hit him. Oh man, I got so lucky there. Uh, you have to hit him in the same direction, like, you know, multiple times in order to get him spinning around so fast that he falls over. Okay, so I was mistaken. The last one wasn't the final one, because I knew there was a little bit more after this, but this, as you can tell, Zone 9 is the final story, so this is where we're going to finish things off. going to start things out in the jail cell that we got thrown into, but it looks like Ye's made her way in. That's because why we're in such a place. Alright, so she's going to get us out of here. She's rather crafty like that. Open the door for us. The real king's probably in a jail cell somewhere here in the castle. So our first order of business is we're going to have to kind of explore this prison a little bit and find the real king in order to get some advice on how to get out of here and actually stop their plans. 
Obviously, there's a lot of kind of tricky enemies here. Uh, those guys that I was killing with the muskets, you can kind of see it there. They'll stop and fire in kind of a three spread pattern directly in front of them. So uh, you do not want to be standing in front of them, that's for sure. Uh, the real king is actually pretty close by, but there's a lot of places to explore, so it'd be easy to get lost. Uh, I think he's actually in this cell right here. Yeah, that's definitely the guy. Alright, so his hint is that there's a secret passage in the wall of the prison that we were put in, and that's what will lead us out. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're basically just gonna leave him there. We're not actually gonna free the guy. You know, I guess he wouldn't really be able to fend for himself too much in here anyway, but... Uh, it's actually a secret passage in one of these. I'm wanting to say you go down here, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a shortcut back. I might be... Oh yeah, I'm good, right there in that second wall. So this is another one of those kind of secret areas, and again, if you have sandals, you can make these jumps and pick up all this stuff. Uh, there's nothing too worthwhile in here. Uh, in fact, I think there's just, like, judo scrolls, maybe. Yeah, like, that's really all there is. But, um, we're not really using this for the items that are inside. Uh, you can't actually, yeah, you can go down here and get a hundred bucks, which doesn't really matter at this point, but might as well. But yeah, we're not really using this for the items. The real reason we're doing this is because it's basically a shortcut back to our jail cell. If we go back up through here, it turns out this is right where we started, so... Uh, that's a very convenient little passage to know about. And we gotta hit the secret wall, which is right up here. And you know, you can't hit that the first time you're in the cell. It doesn't work. Okay, so now it's time to start up the final side-scrolling stage. And this one I really don't think is that bad. Uh, as long as you know to take the upper path, basically. We gotta hit these to get it out of the way. I don't really even know why they're there. Just give us more trouble, I guess. Alright, so as we head out of the castle, like I said, take the top route. Uh, if you're at the uh, ground level, you can see there's a lot of those guys you'd have to deal with. Uh, so you're better off just dealing with the few that start on the rooftops. And if any come up behind you, obviously take them out from there. Alright, we can also go up here and get a uh, health extension, which might be a good idea. Oh man. <laughs> well, I like just... Okay, and that guy was pretty much doomed to get me from the start there. Also, yeah, I do really like the music in this section. Uh, they will stop and, like, throw those things in front of them, which can be kind of a pain sometimes, but uh, you can jump over them if they manage to get the shots off. I was just really unlucky there. I'm also out of armor at this point, uh, which, again, I'm not too worried about because we've got plenty of pizzas. You know, we've got... I think we still have three full ones and three partial ones. So, uh, from this point on, I'm not too concerned about it. Alright, so it turns out they uh, were actually counterfeiting money to turn the castle into a flying castle. And uh, we're gonna have to enter it in order to rescue the princess, so we can break this pot here and get a checkpoint. And again, make sure to take the upper path. Even though it wasn't very long, I guess. Alright, so now as we climb the ladder, we're gonna start the ascent towards the floating castle. I wanna play a little stealth here and wait for those guys to not be looking, otherwise they'll pretty much just like shoot you on sight. Now we gotta do a little cloud platforming here. Uh, the ones that are moving will stay indefinitely, the ones that are not will disappear after just like a second or so. But this isn't too bad, especially compared to those like pendulum, like, ball things we were having to go on earlier. Right, so once you take these two guys out, the doors will open, and we can move into the final section. Now from here on out, it's basically bosses, and then we're done. So um, I think we're in really good shape here. So you can see there's a basically, we're going to be doing a couple refights of the older ones. Uh, they're just kind of different colored. Same strength and everything, you know, four shots will take out each of these orbs. So you can basically just go to town on this guy. Alright, so now we can take out the inner ones. Go to the other side to finish off this one. Alright, now we just gotta throw money into this guy's face and he'll be done. And don't worry, we're not gonna be refighting all of the bosses. There's only a couple we have to get before we reach the final guy. Alright, so this is the, uh, kinda, I kinda like this boss, the cool face guy. Kinda yellow this time now, so, again, strategy is exactly the same, just stand in the corner and lob coins at him. <laughs> you 
Yeah, the, the key is just not to panic if he gets close. You're pretty much safe in the corner. And then the final one where he fills up the entire screen with his big white face. And he's done for. Okay, so now we get to move on to the uh, first part of the final boss. You can see we got this guy on this uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know, cat, bird thing? I, like, I'm not entirely sure what kind of creature this is. I'm sure it's in some kind of mythology. As you can see, the trick here is that we need to uh, hit the arrows back into the animal's face. And that's really the only way you can damage this form. And sometimes I've been able to damage him by throwing coins at his face, but most of the time he just kind of meows and shakes it off. So that's not uh, really the best strategy to go with. Uh, if you stay over here on the left side and are pretty good with hitting the arrows, you can see he doesn't really hit you too much. Uh, the other good news is if you get hit with the arrows, it'll take away from your helmet armor, which you probably haven't been using too much of. You can see we've still got a gold helmet. So even if we do get hit, yeah, at this point, if he gets close, it might be a good idea to just walk in and uh, wait for him to start backing up so you have some room. Ah. Okay, I'm not, <laughs> not doing so well here at the end. He's only got, like, two more hits, I think. Alright, so one more should do it for this one. There it is. Alright, so now this phase, it turns out it's actually a very easy uh, fight to take care of, because literally all you have to do is stand at the far corner. And if you want, you could stand here until time runs out. He'll never come down, he'll never hit you. Uh, so what you gotta do is just kind of lob a shot upwards, and you get him to come down, then just stand over on the edge and throw money at him. And you can see he'll stop before he actually hits you. So, again, kind of a cheap way to take care of it, but I imagine this boss would actually be pretty tough without it. I mean, because he covers a lot of ground. So, let's get him down one more time. It's also, you kind of kind of do this bouncing attack. That would probably be nightmarish to dodge otherwise, but, you know, staying in the side helps a lot. So it looks like we've got a little bit of a standoff here. And whatever creature this is, again, I'm sure it's some kind of mythological thing, but I'm uh, not really too up on that, so... Uh, he says he's not gonna help him anymore, that wasn't the deal they made. Because he sees nothing but a helpless old man without him. So we come to find out his uh, threats are a little bit empty here. <laughs> and we just whack him over the head. So that's it, the princess is saved. And here we go with the credit sequence, you know. You didn't really expect there to be any story after this, did you? <laughs> we just kind of have this little panning shot of the landscape. Uh, some pretty nifty music here, I kind of like it. And uh, the credits list is going to start rolling here in just a second. Don't think I have to hit anything, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, like I'm hitting stuff and nothing's happening, so I think we just have to wait a little. So yeah, that was Legend of the Mystical Ninja on the Super Nintendo. You know, uh, I think as far as, you know, when you think of old school platforming, this is actually a super good example that probably got overlooked by a lot of people. Uh, just because, you know, it wasn't the most popular, and yeah, it's got some translation problems here and there. But, um, you know, in terms of the gameplay, it's actually really, uh, you know, it does have a bit of a challenge. You know, I mean, I cut it close in a couple of places. I almost got a game over there at the end. But, um, you know, it's a good kind of challenge. There are a couple things that might seem a little unfair sometimes. But uh, in terms of, I mean, this is like old school platforming really at its best, I think. It's a super fun game, the music's good, the atmosphere's good, and, you know, it's always fun to play a game that uh, really just doesn't take itself seriously. It's very lighthearted. It's got a good sense of humor, and it's got good gameplay, so, you know, what else could you want? Anyway, quick little credits list there. You can see we're already at the end. The princess is saved, everyone's happy, and everything is good. So I hope you guys have enjoyed Legend of the Mystical Ninja. You know, I'd recommend playing it. Um, also, you know, we've got all the mini games and stuff. I may or may not do a bonus part for those. Um, I'm really not sure, but, um, you know, if I do, we'll see those. And, uh, if not, well, that'll probably do it. 
So that's going to do it for Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.